One turnover. She's the X factor for Coach Tardamala this weekend. On the Butler side, they rely on a freshman primarily for defense. Umu Toure leads the Big East in steals. Another rookie who's not afraid to step it up, John. She's been playing big minutes for Butler this year. Led her team with 15 points in the middle of Providence. She's a tall guard who's not afraid of the contact and finds ways to get to the foul line. Butler trying to finish in the top three in the Big East. St. John's trying to catch them down the stretch. They tip off in a minute here in Queens. Clutch time in the Big East women's basketball regular season. Just two games left and so much on the line for Butler and St. John's squaring off to start the final weekend of regular season play. And the Big East standings so compact, separating third place and eighth place. Just two games, which means St. John's, Seton Hall could rise up and catch Butler. Butler could still finish as high as second. They have that on their mind entering play tonight. Courtside, Karnaseka Arena in Queens with Sky Lindsay. I'm John Yardley. Sky, it's that time of year. The pressure is really building. It's on both of these teams tonight. John, big weekend for Big East basketball indeed. Final games of the regular season, and teams are leaving it all on the floor with the hopes to improve their seeding in the Big East tournament, which is literally right around the corner. Now, both of these teams, usually we're talking about people relying on experience. Tonight we're talking about freshmen who have played big roles on the St. John's side, their second leading scorer, Leilani Correa. And some would say she's been struggling in conference play, but the freshman standout came alive in their win over Seton Hall, shooting 14 for 23 on the floor, scoring 32 points with just one turnover. She's the X factor for Coach Tardamala this weekend. On the Butler side, they rely on a freshman primarily for defense. Umu Toure leads the Big East in steals. Another rookie who's not afraid to step it up, John. She's been playing big minutes for Butler this year. Led her team with 15 points in the middle of Providence. She's a tall guard who's not afraid of the contact and finds ways to get to the foul line. Butler trying to finish in the top three in the Big East. St. John's trying to catch them down the stretch. They tip off in a minute here in Queens. You're watching St. John's basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Ready to tip in Queen's final weekend of the Big East regular season. Underway with Butler in black, bringing it up 11 and five in Big East action in third place coming in against St. John's nine and seven in the conference. Tied for sixth, but more than capable of moving into those top four spots. Cat Strong in the post against Alicia KB early on. Off balance shot, no good. The rebound goes to St. John's. Last off the hands of Shea Bry. Sky Lindsay and John Yardley with you. The starters quickly for St. John's. Tiana England, the point guard. Quadasha Hoppy, Alyssa Alston, Alicia KB, and Emma Nolan all start in what is pretty much a four guard setup. KB will be the four, if you will. For Butler, Genesis Parker and Umu Toure, the backcourt. Kristen Spolier is their leading scorer, over 18 a game. Number 24, she's the one to watch. There's Toure with another steal. The tie-up will keep it with St. John's. Shea Bry and Kat Strong round out the starting five for Butler. 
Nolan getting caught, getting lucky that time. England able to hold on to that pass, but Nolan has to be, make sure that England's open before making that pass. KB open corner three off the front iron. Rebound grabbed by Parker. Here's Spolier looking to go over 1,500 points for her career. And this time, Strong will knock down the jumper, the redshirt senior from Chicago Heights. Strong, she's averaging 7.1 points a game and looked real confident in both releases so far. Radasha Hoppy tore Butler up in the first meeting, which was a resounding St. John's win at Hinkle Fieldhouse December 31st. She had 24 in that game as St. John's pulled away in the third quarter for an easy win. Since then, Butler was 0-2 at the time as Spolier knocks down a three. She's over 500 points on the season, 1,500 for her career. And what a beautiful offensive set that was for Butler and St. John's. They have to know that most of the sets that's going to be run is going to be run for Spolier. Since then, all they've done is go 11-3 and, and lead the Big East in defensive rating. Spolier's the only player in double figures scoring-wise. But they get it done at this end of the floor. And so going to force St. John's to, on their end, offensively run their sets, make the right passes, and be alert because Butler's on a defensive team. You could not afford to play lazy. Spolier rips it away from Alyssa Alston and moves it up the floor. Parker attacking and drawing the foul, and that's the other part of Butler's game. They get to the free throw line like beasts. Parker showing us her end-to-end -end speed that time, was not afraid of the defensive player going right at her and finding an open lane and attacking Hoppy Strong, and that's someone they want to get in foul trouble. They want Hoppy to get in foul trouble. Now they get to the line a lot. They're not tremendous at them. Seventh in the Big East in free throw shooting at 68.8%. Again, in that first meeting, they were just five for 13. It's their lowest free throw total of the season. It's a seven nothing start to the game for Butler today. Emma Nolan, she can hit from outside. She barely missed in warmups and come game time, knocks down the first one. That's right, John, you mentioned it during warmups and Nolan, she's the sharp three point shooter, only a freshman and she's shown that she has a strong perimeter game. She's from Indiana, not near Indianapolis. She's from Valparaiso up in the northern part of the state, but you know Nolan's playing some familiar faces. And that foul whistled against Spolier, so each team's leading scorer with one foul early. And Alicia Kaby looked like she took a hand to the face. Is a little bit shaken up, and they want to review this one. Looking like Spoiler just landed and came down, trying to do a floater shot and just came down on top of KB, but didn't see anything intentional there, John. Eighth year for Joe Tartamella as head coach at St. John's, and a nine and three home record, something they're happy with. Most notably, that win on Sunday when they came from 16 down to beat Seton Hall by one on free throws from Kadeja Bailey in the last five seconds. Just a common foul. So 7-3 Butler as St. John's brings it up. Melissa Alston didn't play in that Seton Hall game. Coach's decision was the official word. Practiced all week, so no worries there. As Hoppy gets inside, double clutches, wound up missing it and committing the foul. And if it's on Hoppy, it is. That's two against St. John's leading scorer. You can see Coach Tartamella not at all happy with Hoppy on that possession. She did a good job finding an open lane, getting to the rim, but a little bit too aggressive that time. Felt she got a clean hand on the ball, but getting called for a second instead. So two minutes, 56 seconds of action for Hoppy, and Leilani Correa checks in a little earlier than she expected. The freshman from Manchester, New Jersey, number two in white. And Correa had an amazing game and their win over Seton Hall. And let's see if she can keep that momentum going. Only a freshman, but does so much for this St. John's team. 
Here's Spolier, got Correa moving. Now hands for Parker. Long range, lefty three. Nolan fighting for the rebound for St. John's. And Nolan, you can see a lot more aggressive defensively and snatching down those rebounds. Oh boy, England airmailed that one into the Butler bench. And we said in that Seton Hall game, the rebounding difference was staggering. And I imagine that was a focus of practice this week. Absolutely. And again, even that time offensively for St. John's was England throwing the ball out of bounds. And we don't see England turn the ball over much, John. But against a Butler group, it's no surprise. We may see a couple of unforeseen turnovers or uncommon turnovers for the St. John's guards. They force turnovers on one out of every five possessions. Second best number in the Big East behind only DePaul. And there's the Kristen Spolier Butler fans have been seeing for four years. Powers through contact for the and one opportunity. And that's the perfect word. Spolier just showing us her power out there and right now just out muscling St. John's and doing a good job that time leaning in and creating the contact. She's from Lebanon, Indiana, same high school as Rick Mount. Third in Indiana history in career points. I mean, she is a decorated individual at the high school level and has had a great career at Butler as well. Alyssa Alston, the quick runner, no good, and Butler a chance to walk it up with the lead. Here's Toure, freshman from Washington State. Two older sisters played Division I basketball, and Butler is glad to have her. Posts up against Correa, spins, and traveled on the floor. Yes, she did. But you know what? I like the fact that Butler's trying to feed the, the star freshman, trying to get her the ball down low, and that time did her best to make a move, but great defense by St. John's to keep their arms straight up and cause that turnover. Nolan in the post, and she takes a hand to the face again from Spolier. And so that's two on Spolier, two on Hoppy in the early going. And Butler will pull Spolier, who's already got six points, in favor of Naira Caceres. You can see right there, Spolier left her defender to try to double team that time and didn't call for, re for reaching in. St. John's with the ball movement. KB her second corner three. Caceres fumbles the rebound, but gets it away. Nearing the halfway point of this first quarter. Just one three-pointer from Emma Nolan for St. John's. Butler has had that defensive game going. Leading 10-3. Here's Caceres, post to post to Cat Strong inside for two. And Joe Tartamella wants a timeout. Butler with the quick start, a 12-3 lead for the Bulldogs. They've got their eye on second place. They can put some pressure on Marquette with a win tonight. 12-3 Butler in the early going. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you.
sixth year in charge for Kurt Gonlewski, the Big East Coach of the Year a season ago when Butler was the number three seed. Could finish third again this year, still could finish as high as second or anywhere from third to eighth, really. But what a campaign for Butler. Came from the high school ranks. He was at Bedford North Lawrence with Damon Bailey, Indiana legend, and actually had him on the Butler staff briefly. And they have made serious strides. Last year was their first winning season since 2013, when they went 23 and 10 and reached the Sweet 16 of the WNIT. KB almost traveled for St. John's as we come out of the timeout. Great start for Butler to this game, trying to get a little revenge. Red Storm had a big win in Indianapolis on New Year's Eve. Again, Butler was 0-2 at that point, 11-3 since. Swept Villanova, swept Creighton. Took care of business against a lot of teams, but St. John's and Seton Hall gave him trouble. They're looking for Caceres in the post it, against Kadeja Bailey, who's into the game. That one's thrown away. Fourth turnover for Butler early. Shea Bry says, my bad. It's not a deep Bulldog roster. Ashanti Thomas is sick. One of their top freshmen is out for the season. And now Spolier in foul trouble early with two on the bench. St. John's will reset this with 15 to shoot. Alston in traffic, dishes looking for KB. She's denied, but a foul called underneath. And St. John's just struggling, finding ways to get open lanes to the rim, but Alston that time doing a great job through her dribbling experience, drawing two defenders and finding KB for the little dish, an amazing job by KB to catch that quick pass. So that's two fouls on Umu Toure, who we highlighted before the game. She's replaced by Upe Atosu. The 26-year-old Nigerian international turned 27 in April, number 21 on the near side of the lane. KB splits the free throws, makes it a 12-4 game, and St. John's will pick up with an aggressive backcourt look. Now they retreat down the floor. This is exactly how St. John started out against Seton Hall in that first quarter. Down by double digits in the first quarter against Seton Hall. And something Coach Cardamello does not want to see his group end up doing again in this first quarter. It was 24 to 10 at the end of that first quarter. St. John's trailed by as much as 16. Came back to win it in dramatic and controversial fashion. Seton Hall was convinced with some reason that the foul called in the final seconds was a clean steal, but it went St. John's way on that occasion. Here's Leilani Correa, one of the big reasons they won that game. Kadeja Bailey another. Bailey had 10 points in the fourth quarter of that one. Nolan loves these spots. That time too strong, or just too short I should say. St. John's a rare offensive board. You can see the length of Butler is really bothering this four guard lineup, even with Correa and I guess Bailey in now, it's maybe not four guards anymore. And Alston forced, being forced to take a lot of floaters, not able to get that extra step into the lane because of this defense by Butler. And they're Correa long with the steal starts the break. Bailey takes it herself and one for St. John's. And if Bailey could get her game going, John, then St. John's has a great chance to get back in this game and close this gap. Bailey's with her left hand going end to end off the steal from Correa. Something we don't see often, but right here, not afraid to put the ball on the floor and get the old school and one. What I tell you Sunday? She usually takes it herself. Uh, so far, it's working. It but works. You can, see, you can see Bailey, though. As the season continues, she's been getting better and better. She's been improving a lot. And Coach Tardamella said that she's become one of their X factors. Now, Kristen Spolier is back in, number 24. Low post at the bottom of your screen, now pushing outside. 
third in the Big East in scoring at better than 18 points a game. Coach Godlewski, he knows that they need his senior on the floor, and so he's going to have to just trust that she's smart enough defensively to not commit that third foul. Your St. John's, you might want to find a way to go at her here. She's a physical player. Shea Bry with a nice move, by the way, up seven now for Butler. KB driving on Bry in response and scoring. KB, nice move. Looked as if she was looking to make the next extra pass, but decided to do a nice crossover and attack the rim herself. KB battling Spoyer. Spoyer with a push off there. KB wasn't happy about it. She gave her a look. Bry is owning Nolan right now. It gets kicked out though. Spolier knocks it down after getting KB off her feet. Nine early, a steal right off the bat. Caceres is stuffed by Nolan, but it's all happening right now. Oh, and Caceres is hurt. Oh, she knew it right away. Jammed a finger or, or maybe something worse that I'm not gonna speculate on. Ball will stay with Butler. And Toure returns. And again, that's how thin Butler is. They have two players, two of their best, each with two fouls in the game late in the first. Coach Godlewski, I know he's going to want his six foot one redshirt junior back on the floor. Correa with a block of Toure inside and then another held ball. And this time it goes to St. John's. And I must say, a very aggressive game so far, John. Both teams being very physical with each other. That first game, St. John's outscored Butler 19 to three in the third quarter. And it was Butler foul after Butler foul after Butler foul. I think both teams knew this one would be physical all the way through. England just got that pass to Alston. They get it to Correa who gets the bounce and a triple. Correa, she has such a quick release, and that time, Spoiler left her for one second, and Correa, she's shown us that she could knock down that long distance three in the split of an eye. All right, Bailey's on Spoiler here. She's got nine of Butler's 17. Looking for Spoiler, seven to shoot for. Her. Tries it from way out, came up short, and Bailey first to the rebound. 30 seconds to play, one second differential. St. John's could hold for one shot here. Joe Tartamel has seen them not exactly listen to him when he said hold for one shot uh, in the all access game against Seton Hall. This time they will work it deep. Nolan wanted to shoot that, but she knew there was too much time on the clock. Correa, foul line J, in and out. Looks like once again didn't listen. I was okay with that from a St. John's perspective. Spolier did get a look. No shot and no contact, at least not enough. And we finished the first quarter with Butler 17, St. John's 12, all to play for, still in Queens. Second quarter action headed your way next. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. 
the 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Butler has led all the way 17 to 12 in favor of the Bulldogs, but it's nothing St. John's hasn't dealt with before. Joe Tartamella in the huddle. We told you on Sunday the Red Storm were down 14 after the first quarter and came all the way back to win it. it it's been kind of a frustrating year at times for Joe Tartamella's guy because this group has so much promise, picked to finish second in the Big East, and yet they are tied for sixth heading into this final weekend. You know what, St. John's, and I was talking to Coach Nicholas before the game, and you never know which team is going to come to play, but as the season has continued and conference play has gone on, St. John's has improved, and you can see they're slowly understanding that they have to finish out games, but they have to start games out strong in order to not be in situations like they were against Seton Hall. I think they might be better coming from behind. We'll have to see how that plays out today. But when they get the lead, they get all cautious. They try to work the shot clock, and that's not really their game. You're probably right, but definitely not better for Coach Tarnamala's heart. No, no, or his hairline. <laughs> Second foul on Cat Strong, so that's three Bulldogs with two fouls, and we're only 10-10 into the contest. And something Butler does there, they do a great job leaning in, trying to draw contact, but the officials today are really looking, at, looking for that lean-in and not giving them that call and giving the offenses out. Matchup zone look here, and St. John's trying to pass into the middle of it to Farley, kicked ball. Raven Farley, number four, six foot two, in there for St. John's for the first time. Yeah, they're gonna trap you all over the floor. Bailey will tow the three-point line and sink it. And I'll tell you what, the sophomore looked real relaxed and poised and very confident for that three, and not known for the three-point shot, but that time, you could see she knew it was going in. She's guarding Spolier now, and they need to be locked in at that end of the floor. Toure finds Spolier, quick post for Strong. Wants to test Farley. Out the help defense from Leilani Correa, five to shoot for Butler, they're out of whack. Parker will take it herself, rough shot. Rebound is all over the place, and Cat Strong comes up with it. And we got three pairs, by the way, of these really bright shoes on the floor. Spolier, true to form, turns the corner, uses the window, and will go to the free throw line. And that's a tough possession for St. John's. Did a great job playing defense for 24 seconds and allowed Strong to get that offensive rebound, giving them a second chance at another possession. And, of course, Spolier is going to get the ball this time and draw some, draw some contact. Again, with Thomas sick and Naira Caceres out with a finger injury sustained in this game, Butler is rotating six right now. They have other players, but they're not players who see high volumes of minutes. That's right, Butler, they're not known for a team that makes a lot of subs, but his girls are going to have to be out there and bring the energy and keep the momentum. And I'm pretty sure they're used to this high 30 plus minutes. 10 points for Spolier, 10 of Butler's 18. St. John's uses the three more than they ever have. They trail by three here in the second. Shea Bry underneath, Spolier is wide open, long three. Offensive rebound given up. They look for Spolier again, Correa read it, but St. John's couldn't hold it, and it's an easy two. 
And that time, too easy for Spalier. The ball just happened to fall right in her hands, and Bailey unable to see her attacking the rim that time. But you can kind of live with that because you're getting the stop. They played a great defensive possession. You're not happy to give up two, but right. did, a lot, did a lot of things right there. Farley looking for Correa. Nice movement to keep it going to Bailey. Great job by St. John's keeping their heads up, playing team offense, and Correa with the nice pass to Bailey. Bailey doing a great job coming off the bench today for St. John's. She had 10 in the fourth quarter against Seton Hall. She's already got eight today. Defending here, Spoyer, neat look. And Bailey the rebound as well. England moving, floor in transition. Alston not shy, that was deflected and it's grabbed by Bry. Frustrated shake of the head from Alyssa Alston. Alston taking some time to get back in the flow of things, did not play in their last game against Seton Hall, and so just trying to get her momentum going. Bailey poked that away, finishes at the other end from the England dime. One point game here. So much fun it must be playing with a point guard like England. If you run the floor hard, she will reward you. I think they know it's going to spoil you. Correa and Bailey have had their hands up over there. Bailey pressuring that, the calls. Which way are we going? It'll stay with Butler, 11 to shoot. And a Bulldog inbound from the corner. England flying high, trying to deny that. Here's Spolier, goes to her right, lost the handle. She's got 12 of Butler's 20, and yet St. John's has come up with steals when the ball's been headed her way time and time again. Spolier, she has such a quick crossover. I'm shocked St. John's was even able to get their hands on the ball that time and tip it out of her hands. England into the traffic. Bailey will hoist. Rim around the collar, not that time. Spolier defended by KB now, who's back in. Genesis Parker pressured by Bailey. She carried it out of bounds. Which way is it going? It'll stay with St. John. Bailey sliding her feet, defense 101, did not allow her to draw, in con draw any contact or lean in, and Bailey just playing smart that time, clean defense. I don't want to jinx it, but this is the best I've ever seen her play. Yeah. <laughs> in, uh, almost two years here. Yeah, she's, de she's, she's definitely been improving, and she's so much more confident. Sophomore from Long Beach, New York, and St. Mary's. She's playing at the top of her game at the best time of the year. Austin wanted to shoot through that zone, knew they had better ball movement in this quarter. KB came up with the rebound, couldn't get rid of it though, successfully. Genesis Parker picks it off. She's been at six schools in the last nine years. Three high schools, three colleges. Spolier in the post. A lot of contact there. But Tiana England winning the battle with Upe Atosu and forcing the turnover. Defense taking over in this second quarter. And it's got St. John's to within one. Midway through the second, 20 to 19. Butler still in the lead. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's.
We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. Voices ready to start great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Welcome back inside Carneseca Arena. Butler 20, St. John's 19, midway through the second quarter. Still feels like the middle of winter, but we're a week away from conference tournament. As we take a look at the series history, we told you a 25 point beatdown at Hinkle Fieldhouse in December. Kodasha Hoppy with 24, and St. John's with a dominant third quarter in that one. Butler, though, swept the series last year as part of that. 23 and 10 campaign that they hope will keep them contending in the Big East year after year. Gwadasha Hoppy, number 21, sitting with foul trouble. Butler has three players, each with two fouls, and they're all in the game because they are not at full strength. Alyssa Alston knocks down the three to put St. John's in front for the first time tonight. And Alyssa Alston found herself wide open, no one guarding her. And this senior is being her last season in her college career, definitely wants to end with a bang. We were talking about the zone and how long and aggressive Butler is in that zone. But that time, Alston had all day to think about it. High score now after Strong went up strong inside. And Butler now in a man to man but switching on everything, John. Giveaway off the entry pass. Another turnover for England. She and Farley discussing. But you know. Farley, she's six foot three. She wants to catch the ball up in the air, and England likes to, for some reason, give her bounce passes. It's not a pass she's really going to be able to catch often. Genesis Parker finds Cat Strong. Open look, but Farley will track down the board. St. John's not being outright rebounded by that much which uh, for Joe Tartamella is good news. Butler fourth in the conference in rebounding, St. John's eighth. Under 10 to shoot for St. John's, still working on the perimeter. This is Bailey. Farley will take the jumper, too strong. KB outnumbered in the lane. KB fighting so hard down low. I love her work ethic. She does the intangibles. She takes some on. punishment too. But Genesis Parker with the rainbow. Put some air under that. Parker averaged nine points a game, really known for her defense. At that time, knocking down a nice pull up. I'd say she was scoring double digits in non-conference, but in Big East play, has only hit 10 points twice this year. That just goes to show you how strong the Big East Conference has been this year. Low percentage shot, pull up jumper from way outside. So St. John's took the lead, but quickly 
Butler four straight points to go back in front. England was in the post, little mouse in the house action there. And Umu Toure able to pick up the foul. Just the second of the quarter by St. John's. Come on, you know mouse in the house. Uh, is that a book? John? John, you have young kids, so you would know that. No, that's thing. that's when a small player is stuck in the post. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So England was definitely had a mismatch that, that's, right that's there. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yes, John. I'm, I'm with you. The first time I heard that, I burst out laughing. This is a few years ago. KB this time all day to pick her spot. Too strong, though. The reason why St. John's got back in the game because they were aggressive, they were attacking, drawing defenders, in addition to each other on the block. But the last couple of minutes been settling for the long perimeter shots. Here's Spolier, under 10 to shoot for Butler. Got it away to Strong. And Bry able to finish as St. John's collapsed on Cat Strong. Nice rotation offensively, though, that time to find Bray cutting towards the hoop for the layup. Four-point Butler lead, a minute to play here in the first half. Correa, just three points in the game. That shot was deflected by Toure. 32 on Sunday, and then she's beaten up the floor by Toure. Flies by, and it's an easy bucket. And that's what happened when you want to complain for the call. And Correa felt she got hit on that shot. Probably did, but no time to talk to the rep or complain. You have to get back on defense, especially with a team like Butler that's constantly going to hustle. Clear push by Strong against Nolan. And that's three fouls on Cat Strong. Another transfer. She came from VCU. And she's replaced by Upe Atosu. Not much doubt about that one. I think she mumbled weight room as that, as that play went down. St. John's trying to get some ball movement, settling for another three and knocking it down, Correa. Wow, and that was a tough one. Correa really was not even open. She needed that For too. that shot, but that high arcing soft release she has, able to knock it down again. Butler can hold for last shot here, but St. John's will do its best to force a turnover, maybe in enough time to go the other way. It's Spolier, blocked by Correa, still has it, four to shoot. Tried to draw contact and hit the rim. No call coming, and that'll do it on the first half. Very entertaining, back and forth. And a lot of possibilities for the way each team could play it in the second half. 20 minutes of basketball in the books. Butler, 28, trying to secure a top three spot. St. John's, 25, trying to chase him down in the standings. The Big East Digital Network comes your way next. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. together great voices ready to start great energy we're getting excited about what we do all right you know how together you are you know how hard you're gonna work but you'd also know how good you are let's go show them one two three together 
This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. can't get enough basketball. We even have halftime action for you from Carneseca Arena on the St. John's campus. The uh, women playing tonight have seen Butler take a 28-25 lead on St. John's here at the half. And we'll hear from both teams as we look at our Big East honors this week. Player of the week, Mary Gadeka. Villanova has been on fire lately. They've always been a bogey team for St. John's, if you will. And we've talked about Leilani Correa's game against Seton Hall. 32 points, blockbuster third quarter for Correa in helping St. John's to that come from behind win. And then the Big East honor roll. Kristen Spolier, of course, I feel like she's on there every week. Jalen Agnew, Shante Stonewall, Maddie Segrist, a really impact freshman for Villanova. And Ariana Gray from Xavier getting on the board going around the Big East Conference. Women's basketball honor roll. We're in the final week of regular season play, so one more honor roll before we head to Chicago in the Big East Women's Basketball Tournament. Starts Friday, runs through Tuesday. Go to BigEast.com slash WBB tickets or call 773-325-SLAM. I've got that on speed dial for ticket information that's coming up. Uh, next weekend again into Tuesday the 9th, the conference final. Both these teams still with reason to believe they can be there. DePaul, they're outlined in yellow. That's the only spot that's locked in, number one. Everything else is up for grabs. Those spots and then two through seven are flexible. Everybody's trying to stay out of seven. They don't want to play on Friday. And you see, if the season ended before tonight, Butler would have played Creighton. That's the same last year. And St. John's would play Villanova, which has beaten them twice in overtime this year. Some people think that's a good matchup because it's hard to beat a team three times. I don't think that's a good matchup for St. John's, but that's probably not going to be it. A lot to sort out tonight and Sunday afternoon in the Big East. Butler can still finish second or third. Could drop into the pack as well trying to get at least one win on this trip. And St. John's really needs to win both to move up in the seedings. At halftime so far, Butler in front. Kristen Spolier with 12 of the Bulldogs, 28. Kadeja Bailey with 10 of the Red Storms, 25. Take a break and come back with more of your halftime report. Not gonna want to miss this. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We got the power, gonna raise it up. 
sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The entire recruitment with Creighton compared to other schools, it was just different. Like, when you talk to other schools, they wanted to know, like, some facts about you, but it wasn't necessarily you as a person. Whereas Creighton, they took a genuine interest in who I was outside of basketball, and then I felt like their morals and values kind of lined up with what I was looking for. So it was really just perfect. The biggest thing that stood out to me during my recruitment at Creighton is the effort. They made it a point to really build a relationship with me and my parents. They were constantly in contact with me, asked me how my day was, really getting to know me as a person and not just a basketball player, and I think that makes the world of a difference. We think it's important to, to treat people the right way, to treat them well, to, to be demanding, but also to take care of them and let them know that we're here for them, we're, we're here to listen. Flynn understands that basketball is just a small part of life and there's a lot more to life than that. And I honestly think that that contributes to our success on the court because it takes some of the pressures off you and you kind of just are free to play and to grow and to know that it's not going to be perfect. We're also about more than just the athletic experience and the student experience. I think it's important that you give them an opportunity to experience as much of Creighton as is possible for a student athlete. So. We probably monopolize their time a little bit less than some programs do. And when we are on the road, we let them do things that are cultural and educational. When you're not constantly at each other's necks in practice and you, we get to go do fun things when we go on these trips. So you get to learn a lot of, about each other. You know, there are so many examples of kids that you would never put together as friends that become really, really close friends that it, it shows you the importance of having those off-court encounters. Coming into college, you don't, you don't really know what to expect, but the culture here and the people here, you have 11 built-in best friends. And I can say for a fact that if I'm having a bad day, every single teammate would be able to just listen and give advice, whether you really need to hear it or not. The one thing that, that strikes me the longer I've been in coaching is just how, how great a job our players do at looking out for one another. Juniors and seniors are really mindful of the adversity maybe and the stumbling blocks that freshmen and sophomores are going to go through and I think they do a great job. The people here, the community here, the experience you have here, teammates, all of that, when you reflect back on it, it's well worth it. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's.
You're not going to want to miss this. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Halftime at Carneseca Arena in Queens. Butler 28 and St. John's 25. Back and forth first half that saw Butler Sky jump out to a big lead. And then St. John's made a run to start the second quarter. John Yardley, Sky Lindsay, what were the keys that you saw coming out of that first half? Butler came out very strong. Spoiler got in a couple of foul trouble, got in foul trouble early, as did Hoppy. And so they were able to outpower St. John's, but St. John's did a great job in the second quarter getting back in the game and closing that gap. One way St. John's did that was via the three-point shot, five out of 13 from three-point range, mostly against the zone, accounting for 15 of their 25. And talk about Bailey's performance, 10 points for her in this first half, a big reason why St. John was able to close that gap. But I'm so impressed by Butler running the floor hard that time, playing great team basketball and aggressive to get some nice buckets in the first half. See some of the inside play it was a physical first half as well. 12 fouls between the teams. And you see some of that St. John's run. Here's the ball movement that was really St. John's at its best. They did a great job passing the ball in the interior, in the middle, the heart of the paint. And right here, England running hard and rewarding Bailey for two of her 10 points. And Alston back in the game today, knocking down a three of her own. This was Correa's three late that made it a three-point game at the half. And you see the numbers. Butler shooting better, but not from outside. And the rebound edge slightly to Baylor. Bailey with 10 for St. John. Spolier with 12 for Butler. The leading scorers in the first half. Again, in the first meeting, it was a 19-3 St. John's run in the third game. We'll see which team jumps out on top when we come back with third quarter action. Butler and St. John's squaring off on the final weekend of the regular season. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the... Kodasha Hoppy averages 16 points a game. She only played three minutes in that first half, picked up two quick fouls, didn't play a second after that. She returns to the floor to start the second half in a three-point game. Three Butler players dealt with foul trouble. None picked up a third foul. So that's something to keep an eye on. They're not deep, have only played seven players in this game. Tiana England, nice move, wiggling through a little crease. England did not score in the first half, getting the first bucket of her own in this game. And Hoppy, I want to see them try to get her touches, but I don't want to see her force things, being that she hasn't been able to contribute in that first half. Let the game come to her. Here's Spolier, 12 points in the first half, two fouls. 
Spinning lefty right at Hoppy and Nolan reaching for it, tipped it out of bounds and she rolls her eyes skyward. 20 seconds on the shot clock for Butler. A bit of miscommunication. I think Nolan might have thought Hoppy was going to get that rebound. And Nolan has to know, just grab every rebound. Let all of them be yours. Cat Strong, very effective at times in that first half. She's got eight points. She's also picked up an assist. Five rebounds for her. And St. John's turning it over at the other end. You know what, Strong? She's not that tall. Only 5'11", but still playing down low in the post. But she loves that fadeaway, that mid-range fadeaway. She has a nice touch to knock those down. Fading away from KB. Missed that one. Nolan the rebound. Alston spots up. Sinks it. Tie game again. Alston off the handoff. And for some reason, Butler, who's been switching on everything, did not switch that time when it was a bit of miscommunication and left her wide open. So I don't think you want to go under there. Bry looking for Spolier, awkward dribbling, and KB basically tackled Toure. Was lucky not to get called for it. That was really fortunate. Butler winds up taking a timeout, but KB was going for the ball. She got Umu Toure's leg. And Butler will retain the basketball with 12 to shoot when we come back. 30-30, all square, early in the second half of this one. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah! That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Kristen Spolier, number 24 in black, leading the way all season. You see the numbers. Gets to the free throw line like nobody's business. Third in the big conference in scoring. And she has been their leading scorer in 23 of 27 games this year. If they're going to win, it's going to go through Spolier. 12 points are ready in this game. Two for four behind the three-point line. You can see her right there smiling, and so that means she's ready to go off this second half. And, and she's impressed you so far. Very impressed. She doesn't have much height, but she has a big heart, and she knows how to use her size to her advantage, and does a great job drawing the contact, playing through contact, and I don't know, that smirk on her face just now. If I was St. John's, I'd be a bit worried. They have to keep an eye on her. I mentioned everyone for Butler had avoided big foul trouble. Strong does have three. So that's one to watch in the post. Four. 
Long timeout, and then right out of it at the first change, Correa comes in for Nolan. A little more scoring punch on the floor for St. John's. Hoppy still scoreless in the game, averaging better than 16. Alston on the move, picks up. Correa, rough angle, going against two. Shea Bry grimacing as she gets up on the Butler side, but the Bulldogs get a stop. Correa a bit out of control that time. and Not sure, although I know Coach Chernamella is okay with every shot Correa takes. Not the best one by her. Spolier didn't look like there was much space there, but she sinks it. I called it, John. When we saw that smirk during that timeout, we knew she was coming and ready to play the second half. And Spolier grabs the rebound at the other end. One woman wrecking crew coming up. Sky Lindsay's halftime prediction. I wouldn't be surprised. I see if Correa, who now has the assignment of staying with her, can contain her. Hoppy trying to stay with Spolier around. A couple of screens, got it away, no good. Correa the rebound. Oh, Alston had all day for a second there. Then into traffic to the floor. Got it to Correa. St. John's has plenty of time here. They get it to Hoppy. Switch! And that's got to be a huge confidence booster for Hoppy. Let's see if letting her, her seeing the ball go through the rim one time can get her game going. Toure against England, no good. KB the rebound, and St. John's out. Lightning quick. Correa way off, and Spolier the rebound for Butler. Wide open look for Toure off the penetration by Spolier. It's tipped right to Correa. They don't have numbers this time. And Hoppy will pull it back. And Butler, for the most part, this entire game, a great job constantly getting back on defense. I haven't really allowed St. John's to get many fast break layups. 8-2, the fast break points in St. John's favor, but... To your point, there have been more opportunities than that. How about Kwadasha Hoppy with the cross and the J? And the entire arena like that move, and that's what makes her so special. She has that off the dribble play. She has that play with the basketball. She's a great ball handler and a great shooter. Second lead of the game for 5-33. Spolier defended by Hoppy. Picks up her dribble with six to shoot. Trying to get it to Strong, fading away and using the glass. Strong, you have to be ready for the fadeaway. KB should know that by now, but. How do you how do you defend that fadeaway? You're right, you're right. Just have to get both hands up, but Strong, she's wide. She uses her body to her advantage so well. KB going inside, draws the foul. Now, who's it on? This is. It's either going to be three on Toure or four on Strong. It's the third against Umu Toure. Well, we were tied a couple minutes into the quarter. We are still tied 35-35. St. John's on the move right now, though. Much more still to come from Queens here on the Big East Digital Network. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. We're all in all together. 
great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Join the conversation with hashtag Big East WBB. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. There's number 10, Naira Caceres. You can see the wrap on her left ring in. Pinky fingers taped together. Hurt that finger in the first quarter pretty early. Barely played in that first half, but is going to go back in here in the third quarter, and that's a big boost for a Butler team that has only played seven players tonight. Yeah, it brings some extra height to the floor for Butler. Six foot one, and so now able to, we'll see if they can dominate the boards with their six foot one junior back on the floor. Transfer from Maine. She said, I have not been able to adapt to such a slow pace of play. <laughs> From the Canary Islands in Spain. Now her second year playing, her third year at Butler. Ooh, St. John switching things up, coming out in a full court press. They did this at times in the first meeting, but Butler broke it at times as well. Spolier sitting on 15 points is at the top of your screen, number 24. Bry in the high post, a, a Tosu. Caceres, too strong, the rebound comes right back to her and she pulls it back out. Butler third in the Big East behind only DePaul and Marquette and they could still pass Marquette with a big weekend. Foul away from the ball underneath. It'll go against St. John's. St. John's, you know, they have to be smart defensively because Butler, they are aggressive. And, and that's Hobby's third right there. You know, Butler, they're so aggressive up, even when they don't have the ball in their hands, when they're moving, they're slightly pushing off. And so St. John's, they cannot try to push back and Hoppy getting called for doing so. Spull here, super physical going through the lane. If you stand in there and take that, it's a charge, but nobody did. Nobody wants to be in her way. I don't think I want to be in her way either. Spoiler, when she has the ball and she's determined to score, she's going to score. That time, a strong hook with her elbow <laughs> before she made that one. Kodasha Hoppy comes right back with a triple. And that was a triple off the dribble, a professional caliber move. That is, not many girls can make those off the dribble. Eight for Hoppy, all of them in this second half after she missed basically the entire first half due to foul trouble. And she still has three, and they go right at Quadasha Hoppy. Spolier able to avoid the contact and score. And St. John's, her teammates have to be aware if that mismatch happens because they are switching on everything and Hoppy ends up having to guard Spolier, someone has to come over and help her and double team because Hoppy cannot afford to pick up her fourth. I'm gonna say, yeah, you have to hide her defensively a little bit. And Joe Tardamella is gonna give her a rest here with that in mind. And it's hard because St. John's, they're switching on everything. And right. so at some point, Hoppy or someone's going to be stuck guarding her at some well, and, moment. And Butler knows that and they can get that switch whenever they want. Bailey in the corner, trapped a little, gets it away to England. 
Alston with the penetration. KB goes up strong and draws the foul. We saw a lot of that in the first meeting. And KB, who just hit two free throws a minute ago, will have another chance. First foul against Caceres of Butler. Right there, KB catching the ball in the heart of the paint, going right at the Butler defense. Four for six at the free throw line, uh, KB. St. John's with a two point lead, little trap there. Caceres gets it away, three on two, and now Butler will set up the offense. Bailey defending Spolier. Post up. Atosu on the drive and gets free. Got right past Alston to tie the score once again. Fouls yet in the game. Not sure why she just stopped defending that time. Travel there. She thought she was just picking up her dribble. But it's a turnover here in the final two minutes of the third quarter. Upe Atosu started playing basketball when she was 15 and was playing for the Nigerian youth national teams later that same year. Alston lost her footing. The layup is missed. The rebound still loose, and Bailey moves it the other way. St. John's getting lucky. That's a layup. She has to make Atosu. Loose on the floor. Ahead looking for Caceres, and KB is called for a foul. Ooh. A lot of back and forth turnovers from both ends, and it all started from that missed layup by Atosu. First foul against KB. We're going to see unique Drake here for St. John's. Drake is someone Coach Tadamela said. He tries to get in the game more, but right here, KB hitting it from behind, but the ref field, and she grabbed her on the arm a little bit. Strong, went up too strong on the inbound. How many puns there? I just can't get them all in. Correa puts St. John's in front, and St. John's will pick up here, Alston and Drake. Drake now defending Atosu, freshman from Columbia, South Carolina. Spolier. They get it to her against KB. This is physical. She just goes right at you. If you set your feet and fall down, it's a foul. But KB, good job that time. She knows that she's going to lean in and did not allow her to draw the foul like she wanted to do and found a way to get her hands on the basketball cleanly. So that was a jump ball, and so six to shoot for Butler. They go quickly for the height of Caceres. Big mismatch. Everybody in the gym calling for a walk, and now KB is called for a foul. Hacking strong. It was clearly a walk. Joe Tartamella pleading. It's not going to be called now. It's two on KB. And Strong, not a good free throw shooter, heads to the line. Are they serious? <laughs> They're going to review that for some uh, it, malicious intent by KB? KB did foul her kind of right. hard there, John, but... It, it, it's basketball. It, that's the trying to control this game, but you can see the way both teams are playing, and... We mentioned in the intro, this is a big weekend for both teams. They want this win badly, and the uh, official is just trying to keep control of this game, but could get even more physical. I I'm shocked that's being reviewed. That's just a normal foul. but they reviewed the one in the first quarter that we didn't see a whole lot on with Spolier. Yeah, not a lot here either. Bruce Morris, Mark Resch, Katie Lakonich, 
the referees this evening. And again, Strong, just a 52% free throw shooter, but having a great game. 10 points, 8 boards, a couple of assists as well. Strong, she just does what she knows how to do, and she plays within her game, does not try to do anything spectacular, and that's why she has double-digit points in this game. Now off the second free throw with 45.1 to go, if you're St. John's, you want to get a shot off in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock, a reasonable shot, don't force it too much to try and get two shots here to Butler's one down the stretch. Possibly get two possessions out of it, but with that Butler defense, you can have a goal offensively, but Butler, they, said they, make, they find a way to deter that goal. <laughs> she stopped halfway through the free throw. And so the question is, when did the lane violation occur before she pumped or not? Maybe that they should review, huh, John? Would that they could. And there you go. They've gotten it correct, at least as best as I can make out. <laughs> that double clutch will not fly. So we'll see if St. John's goes quickly here. They're, they look like it. Maybe not. I don't get it. Why take it with exactly 30 on the clock? Butler a chance to go ahead on the final possession of the third quarter. Spolier against Hoppy with her three fouls. Didn't want a piece of it that time. St. John's gets the stop with a lot of time left. Five to shoot. KB driving, going to the basket, throwing it up and drawing the foul. She'll go to the free throw line here late in the third. And that might be the quickest I've ever seen KB run. Showing us her end-to-end -end speed that time. Great job to get it up there before the buzzer went off and draw a foul. Right here, you can see it right here, determined and leaned in just enough to get that foul call. KB with six points, most of them at the free throw line, five rebounds as well. What a turn there. Butler could have gone ahead, drew out the possession, and wound up with Parker driving. And KB going end to end. Converting at the line to put St. John's up three. See if Spolier thought she was going to try and draw a foul again. Could not that time. And St. John's has taken the lead, but we know Butler's not going anywhere easily. Red Storm 45 and the Bulldogs 42 as we head to the fourth. St. John's University is New York through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. 
All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust. Not gonna want to miss this. All right, we gotta be all in, all in. All right, we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other, and allowed yourselves to be helped with that. All right, we've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Physical third quarter saw St. John's come from three points down to lead by three as we head to the fourth, but it was going both ways. Both teams had their moments in the third. Yeah, and Hoppy back on the floor in the third, and boy did she have her moment. Eight points straight for her. Really came back, and she's the reason they have that six-point that six point, that plus, it's the reason they went plus six over Butler in the third quarter. Also, seven fast break points for St. John's in that quarter. They are up 15 to two in fast break points for the game. But Butler so stingy, second best defense in the Big East. Will try and lock down here in the fourth quarter and look for a road win. St. John's trying to sweep the season series and close to within a game of the Bulldogs, who will finish the regular schedule at Seton Hall on Sunday. St. John's will be here, 4 o'clock Eastern Sunday afternoon, back half of a doubleheader with the men's game, hosting Xavier. Xavier, by the way, was beating Seton Hall at halftime by a point on the out-of-town scoreboard. And we also had Creighton leading Villanova by six out in Omaha. That score was at the half. Right here, Butler led by as much as seven in the first quarter. We've had six ties, three lead changes, most of them in the third. Correa on the drive, tough shot through traffic, but St. John's the rebound. Now tapped out to Toure, and Alston going to regret the decision to put that straight back up. <laughs> Genesis Parker attacks and brings Butler to within one. Parker, someone that they did not stop just now defensively, allowed her to just bring the ball up. There's some fast break points for Butler. Yeah, went right to the rim. Yeah, they're leaving KB open. She's 0 for 4 from three point range. Atosu attacking England goes right into her. But the feet weren't set, it's a foul. Yeah, England bailed her out by dropping her arm at the very last minute. And you know she wants to go right. And didn't try to make anything, do anything different but go right. But England really bailing her out. You ever play against a team that tried to initiate contact this much at both ends of the floor? Absolutely. This is the, the Big East, and a lot of teams are very aggressive. And Butler's just one of those teams, and they also can get in your head mentally. If you're not used to playing against such a physical team, it can get in your head, and you can see right now it's in St. John's mind, especially KB. Let's say that's the way St. John's has played defense over the years with some of their teams. I would hate to be the team on the other end of it. 45-45, <laughs> Upe Atosu. Junior college transfer sinks the second to give Butler a one-point lead. Lissa Alston on the move. She's flying and she's denied by Toure who commits a foul. It'll be the fourth against Toure and send Alston to the line. I'll tell you what, John, these girls are 
on both sides going to be icing a lot after this game and a lot of black and blues because this is going to be clearly a very physical weekend. Well, I and the PA announcer both have that as four on Toure, but the uh, stats monitor has it as three. And Alston, before the game started, was awarded for her thousandth point, her career college point. Not all at St. John's, but still a very hard thing to do, score 1,000 points in your college career. So we'll keep an eye on that Toure foul situation. Again, the official numbers that we were handed after the third quarter had her with two fouls then, and thus three fouls now. So you'd think that's been checked by both staffs. Tosu trapped. Bry kept it moving. Spolier lets the flyby go, but misses. Strong, though, up strong, and one for the Bulldogs. And strong, you're All going to have space. You're going to have to foul her a lot harder if you want to stop her from getting an and one. And strong just took that like it was nothing. Really just happened to be at the right spot at the right time that time for that rebound. I don't think it was an accident. Looks good from the free throw line today. Boy, Alston is bringing the ball up as fast as humanly possible. Correa, tough shot under pressure, got her own rebound, and England keeps it moving. See if St. John's can reset here. They got plenty of time. England into the zone, stripped by Bry, but Hoppy gets it right back for St. John's. She goes up and is fouled. Shea Bry going to be whistled for it after turning it over. Happy, nice job being sneaky, standing right there, waiting for that outlet pass and getting the steal. And a lot of contact that time, but I'll tell you what, Butler made sure she didn't get an and one. They fouled her hard. They called this on Spolier, which is a big decision. I know it's early in the fourth, but that is her third. I, I didn't see Spolier anywhere near it. I thought it was on Bry. Spolier has 19, Strong has 14 for Butler. St. John's, everybody on the floor right now has somewhere between eight and 10 points, very balanced. Hoppy now with 10 all in the second half. So no one guarding the basketball right now. Matosu driving against Hoppy, missed it. KB tapped the rebound wisely to Bailey. Alston up the floor, open look for Bailey, puts it on the floor, kicks it out. Another three from KB, she's 0 for 5 from outside. Joe Tartamella pleading with Correa to pressure the ball. Really no true point guard out there for Butler this season. And that's why Joe Tartamella wanted Correa to pressure the ball. She comes up with it and draws a foul. Got to be a good feeling as a head coach when your player decides to listen and then she sees <laughs> results. And you just hope that they remember that you told them that and listen the next time. The joy of coaching. Someday, Sky, it'll happen. Correa, no hesitation, puts St. John's in front. And I'm shocked Butler left her open. That was in Strong's corner, but Strong not quick enough, clearly, to get out there and contest. Here is Kat Strong at the other end. Oh, Correa went for the steal. Got bailed out by Kadeja Bailey. And that's what I say, always keep your arms active on defense. Defense is not only about your feet, but talk about the release. Had her feet set on that one to knock that three down. 11 points now for Leilani Correa. 
Couple screens for Spolier here against Bailey. Goes right, kick out, strong. Well short, and Bailey, the rebound, secured it well. Like the patience by Alston, Correa's shot is off though. And Bry finally the rebound. KB trying to keep up with her. St. John still doesn't have the assignment straight. And again, no feet set, and Genesis Parker draws the foul. Parker, she's going to go right at Alston every single time. Alston's only five foot six, and so Alston's either gonna have to try to grab the ball while it's low, or... Parker only looks taller with the hair. It's only two inches. The hair counts, John. <laughs> oh, really? Well, then I think she'd be bigger than 5'8". <laughs> She dropped 30 in the WNIT last year against Michigan State. Makes it a one point game, 6-13 to go in the fourth. A world of difference from their first meeting way back December 31st. This is the slowest Alston has brought the ball up today. Also, the most she's brought the ball up. England has been out the game a lot more than often today. Finally, the arm bar called. Three on Atosu. Joe Tartamella had to plead for it. Four fouls now against Butler. They're over the limit. And free throws coming for KB. KB has just been getting beat up and hit all game, but she's such a tough player. But Butler could not, really not the best situation now as far as fouls concerned, because now St. John has the opportunity to go to the foul line each time. Boy, KB, the senior from Philly. Seems like she's always playing through some sort of injury. And giving St. John so much in so many different spots on the floor. She's hitting her free throws tonight. Three point lead now, under six minutes to go. See if Parker drives at Alston again. Instead it's Spolier. Toure inside using the window, one point game again. Oh, that's deflected and KB stops going for it. Bry will lay it in and put Butler in front. How about Shea Bry continuing after that one? Right now, every possession matters and both teams have to take care of the basketball and make the right, smart, sharp passes. Hoppy into the teeth of the defense, forcing it a bit. Rebound, bounced once, and Bry came up with it. KB looks gassed. Five minutes to play. A Tosu blocked by KB, but they'll call a foul. It's the third on Alicia KB. And free throws for Atosu when we come back. One possession game, back and forth. Butler 55, St. John's 54. Final four and a half minutes coming your way next. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated. Our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. We aren't just dreamers. 
We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? But we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. You're watching St. John's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. Join the conversation with hashtag Big East WBB. Eight lead changes, nine ties, and a one-point game with four and a half minutes to play here between third place Butler and tied for six St. John's. Here's the last play, Alicia Kaby with a hack of Upe Atosu. Took that on the side of the head, maybe? And you know what? It's just been that type of game, John. And we said this weekend was going to be intense. And it's been a very physical game. And you can see KB that time just making sure she didn't give up the and one. And fouls her hard enough to make sure she didn't score. KB and Alston, no Tiana England. A Tosu, good free throw shooter, 79%. Afro basket champion with Nigeria in 2017, and that's what led her coming to the U.S. First team All-America junior college selection. Hits the second to make it a two-point game. Alston, Hoppy, Correa, KB, and Bailey for St. John's. Parker, Toure, Atosu, Bry, and Spolier for Butler. Alston slicing through. KB, what a rebound. Puts it back up. Doesn't get the bounce. And it's headed out of bounds in Butler's direction. And boy, did she get up there to snatch down that rebound. And she deserved that put back, but could not get it to fall. I mean, what an effort. That was one in the midst of three. Big time effort. Tiana England getting set to check in for St. John's. KB checking a toe suit. Toure going inside, going straight up, and gives Butler a four-point lead. And that's only six points for Toure, but she knew if she has Hoppy on her, she must find a way to get up there and get the ball up and try to throw a foul. Hoppy just did not want to commit a foul. Hoppy with the mean cross, but then gave it away, and KB has to fall on it. The possession arrow goes to Butler right now. Much better half-court execution by Butler here in the fourth quarter. Yes, that was not a good pass by Hoppy at all. KB just able to, at the last minute, jump on top of it and at least get a jump ball. Right now, Butler just able to run their sets a little bit better. So Bailey comes out, and so Correa and KB, the biggest St. John's players on the floor. The 
right now, though, strong not on the floor, so they can't afford to make that transition and do those subs. Bry with her height advantage draws a foul. Six foot senior from Eau Claire Regis High School in Wisconsin. Career high in starts this year. 6.6 6 boards will shoot the free throws. KB has committed three of her four fouls in this third, in this fourth quarter, it looks like. And a couple of those fouls just out of frustration. Although that time, a big time mismatch. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you say, because Strong's not on the floor, but there's still a height disadvantage. But I'm sure St. John's are, you know, they're used to having that disadvantage, right. you know. KB's used to having to guard girls with three or four inches over her. Great double by Butler. England couldn't get the ball away to the open player. Now Hoppy putting it on the floor and going high off the glass. And St. John's will pick up with some pressure. Now they back off. Hoppy, someone that's tough to guard one-on-one, -on -one, and she has so many different dribbling moves that she brings out there that gets her into the lane. Spoyer's been quiet of late, threw that one away. Not a good pass, the freshman tour, and not ready for that one. A bit too strong for her to be so close to it. Spoyer hasn't scored in this fourth quarter. Sitting on 19 points. Which means she is tied for fourth all time in Butler history, but that is incidental at the moment. England is blocked with the rebound put up and in. KB does the intangibles, always hustling. I don't think she ever gets tired. She looks tired, but she fights through it every time. Butler able to break the trap and now set up. 2.15 to play and a two-point lead. They've been executing in these situations all year. Tight wins against teams that were picked to finish ahead of them. Spolier over Correa. Nothing but net. And Correa know by now if Spolier has the ball, you have to get in her face. Correa gave her way too much space for that one. And she is now fourth in Butler history in career points. Well over 1,500 now. And that has Butler up four with a minute 52 left. And a big time possession coming up for St. John's. I know Coach Tardamella in this timeout is discussing what is discussing who to get the whose hands to get the ball in. And I say get the ball into Hoppy's hands. Hoppy's had the legit handles most of the day. She's been able to create the best and get to the rim and against this tough Butler defense, and it's not easy to get to the rim against these girls. And she should have fresh legs too, right? Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> the whole first half to relax. I'm sure she's been eager to come out and play. You can show, she could see it. Alston saw room, drove, and got fouled. No continuation, but free throws for Alyssa Alston. And Alston's smart. She knows exactly when to pick the ball up and start her two steps to the rim. Right before someone can try to double team or get their hands on the ball. She's a real smart player. 77% free throw shooter. Incredibly balanced scoring by St. John's today. Fifth Red Storm player in double digits. Now Coach Tarnamella going big, putting Nolan in, taking Hoppy out on this defensive possession. Say he's going to go defense offense here, right? <laughs> that was my one chance, guy, and I didn't make the play. You ducked from the ball, John. I I did. I was going to argue with you, but no excuses. <laughs> what a feed, Spolier rims off. 
but strong the offensive board. Minute and a half to go. And that's those plays that St. John's needs to win, but Butler, Butler keeps out hustling and winning. Those offensive rebounds. Offensive foul, KB, who else draws the charge? KB, she's always the girl that's not afraid to really sacrifice her body for her team. And she's been doing that all night, probably all season. And strong is strong. You have to be very strong to step in there and take a charge by her. And big time stop for KB. Butler by two. Minute 15 to go. In the fourth. Alston trying to turn again, drawing contact again. Didn't get the bounce, but free throws coming for Alyssa Alston. And Bray, she's always going for the block shot. I know it's tempting Alston. She's only five foot six, and Bray is six feet tall. But Alston, she's smart. She leans in, and Bray gets called for that foul each time. You can look at the timing and see this times out well for Butler to get the last shot, but it, of course, Depends on how both teams execute down the stretch. Tie game with a minute 10 to play. Nolan in for defense again. Atosu picked up by England in the backcourt. Correa, Nolan got there. Almost came away with the ball and then fouled Bry. And St. John's is over the limit. It'll be free throws for Shea Bry. But did her head hit the floor there? She looks shaky getting up. Nolan one step too slow in getting that steal. Did not rotate over quick enough. And good call by the ref. A little late, but good call by the ref. There's Nolan going for the steal. Watch when Bry lands. Yeah, oh, her head hit the floor hard. You got to check her out. She should not. She should not be allowed to continue right away. You you need to evaluate this. Well, there's a tough group. There's, there's too yeah. much information about head injuries to let her go right away. She hits both. Butler up two. Big time free throws for her as well. England trapped, gets it away to Alston. Correa fouled on the perimeter by Spolier. And it's free throws for Correa with 51.6 to go. If it's a free throw shooting contest, the numbers dictate a slight edge to St. John's. 74.2 versus Butler's 68.8 in conference play this year. And right now that's four fouls on Spoiler. So imagine if this game possibly goes into overtime. Spoiler would be in big time foul trouble if so. Scoreboard listing Toure, Strong, and Spoiler with four each. Kurt Godlewski wants a timeout with 51.6 to play. What a game, back and forth since the second quarter and the fourth quarter in particular has seen each team get up, respond, and go again. This has been definitely a back and forth battle and clearly till the very end it's going to be. And St. John's, they're going to keep that full court pressure on Butler. They still do not have a true spoiler. She has four fouls, and so the ball, and she's going to want to find a way to get to the hoop, but she's smart and not getting offensive. She's going to try to do so. Creighton has already won. They handled Villanova by 20, so they're both 10 and 7. Seton Hall is seconds away from winning. They'll be 10 and 7. St. John's trying to keep pace with all of them, needs this win to go to 10 and seven. So 
So Butler advances it after the timeout. 51.6 to play. Again, both teams over the limit in terms of fouls. Bailey guarding Spolier. She's trying to post up. Backing down, kicks it out. Strong for three, bottom! Cat Strong nails it from downtown! And that was a big time gamble by St. John's. KB had to leave Strong to double team and help guard Spolier and really dare Strong to knock it down, but she stepped up big time, the senior, and knocked it down. Three for 26 on the season from three point range. Just her fourth made three, and surely the biggest. And I would have said that that was the right play to do defensively. If Spoiler has the ball, and she's double team, let KB leave Strong. And so, exactly what they were probably told to do, they did. But who knew Strong? She has ice in her veins tonight. Literally an 11% three point shooter on the season. Full credit to her for stepping into that with confidence. Now, St. John's ball, 39.3 to go. Do you call a play and look for a three here, or do you just get points? I say still, John, go for the two, go for the quick bucket, and then still put some pressure on Butler again. The fact still remains they do not have a true guard, true point guard out there. And so put you still some time to get a quick bucket and then put some pressure on them and hopefully get a steal. It was a steal of a fourth consecutive inbounds pass that gave St. John's the critical free throws on Sunday. Butler by three after the cat strong tray. Alston drives. Now Correa. Alston into the paint, going up, got contact, and once again, she can't get an and one tonight, but she'll go to the free throw line. You're not gonna get and ones much against Butler. Butler, if they're going to foul, they make sure they foul hard. And so Alston just got to step up and make some very pressure-filled free throws. The 30.5, so there'll be you know, virtually no difference between game and shot clocks, even though the shot clock is on. St. John's probably going to have to foul at some point here if they can't come up with a steal. One point game, and Butler will take the timeout. Choose to advance the ball again. But Kurt, they will, and Kurt Godlewski will get a chance to set up an inbound play. One timeout left for each team. Do we, does St. John's gamble again, John, and double off of Strong? Can Strong knock down another one? I wonder what St. John's is going to do this time around. There are only two girls, really, they have to overly defend, and that's Spoiler and Strong. But if you're Butler, you don't have to shoot. You just have to pass, which is a lot easier said than done. That's true. That's why I'm a little surprised they advance the ball, but of course they can still go into the backcourt if they need to, to inbound. Parker Toure, Bry Spolier, and Strong for Butler. Fry will do the honor, or Bry, I beg your pardon, will do the honors at the bottom of your screen. Gets it into Spolier, fouled quickly by Hoppy. I'm surprised they didn't try to trap before committing the foul? I would have had, instead of guarding the inbounder, I would have just had two people staying with Spolier. And I wouldn't have had Hoppy be the one to commit that foul. Fourth on Hoppy. 77 free throw shooter, Spolier. A lot of time left, 29.8, to play the free throw game. But it requires execution at both ends. And rims out, the rebound is loose. Correa got it to England. St. John's moves it quickly. Down two, Alston drives, lays it up, and ties the game. 21.7 to go. Another timeout, Butler though, and now they can hold for last shot. 
But what a quarter from Alyssa Alston. Yeah, Alston went right at Spoyer. And Spoyer, she has four fouls. She knew she could not commit that fifth one. And so really was forced to give Alston that layup. Right here, nice crossover at the top, but she knew she could not foul her. And Alyssa Alston, the nice, quick, fast, quick layup for her. And then two points to tie the game. 10 points in the fourth quarter for Alston. She had six, now she has 16 to tie the score. But again, it leaves Butler the chance to take the last shot to either win it or go to overtime. And will it be another cat strong three out of a double? Time will tell. That's right, because the, uh, you have to double team Spoiler. I don't. I think one on one Spoiler is such a smart player. She's going to find a way to either score a bucket or get to the free throw line. And so, if St. John's does not find a way to gamble the right way and have two girls on Spoiler, she's going to score. That was Butler's last timeout. St. John's does have one remaining. So this time, Toure will inbound. Again, it's on the far side from the benches. The near side as we look at it from up top. Looking for Genesis Parker. It's knocked out of bounds by Hoppy. They want three tenths of a second to run off. And Butler, they have no timeouts to try to figure out a different inbounds play. And now St. John really probably knows what they're going to try to do. Parker is still the target. Toure gets it into Spolier right back to Toure. Spolier hanging out at the top of your screen. Bailey on her. Parker gets it to Spolier. Trying to get it away. KB picked it up. KB looking at the clock. KB didn't get it off. She didn't get it off. Time expires. And we're off to overtime. What a frantic finish. KB had the clock in front of her. There was no foul. And we've got more basketball. And I think that was a good no call by the ref. I know St. John's is screaming for the foul call. But oh, what yeah. an ending. That was for that fourth quarter. She's got to get it up there, though. It's a better chance of getting a foul call. There's a chance it goes in. Oh, but hey, coming up with the steal was some kind of finish. Hard to predict that. We'll take a quick break. You're not going anywhere. You're coming back with us for overtime next. St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. I gotta get home. <laughs> I know you do too. Well, this is the last possession. Alicia KB coming up with the steal. Hoping to draw contact there, but I don't know if she ever saw the clock. Her head was down as she dribbled with that. Keep an eye on Alicia KB's eyes here. She took one look. I think she did the right thing, you know, attack the rim, go for the layup. If you don't get it up in time, at least you know you did not lose the game because of it. Well, overtime, and remember, those fouls are a factor. Butler has four players with four fouls. Toure, Strong, Spolier, and Atosu. St. John's has KB and Hoppy all sitting on four. Overtime in what has been and could be a classic to start this final weekend of the regular season. 
Genesis Parker running the point for Butler. Bry has been very good, hands to Toure, back door for Strong. She's had a terrific night and scores to start overtime. Yeah, Strong's going every single time. KB has four fouls. They're really not strong. KB strong, but not as strong as Strong. And so they may have to try to find a way to double team Strong as well down low. Say St. John's has a little more depth. They could be using players who aren't in foul trouble. But of course, those aren't the players with the experience necessarily that a KB or a Hoppy has. 70-68 Butler here in OT. Bulldogs beat Xavier in their only overtime game. St. John's 1-3 in the extra. They beat Fairfield, lost at UNLV, and lost to Villanova twice. And Butler again getting the ball in the hands of oh. Butler for yet another bucket. Oh, KB just crushed Spolier to the ground. Kurt Godlewski was furious about it. What a screen. Wow. And that's a risk because that's a foul and it and would have been her fifth had it been called. Strong missed, tapped out. But they're going to say that stayed with Butler. It looked like Bry gave it a big tap. And Nolan's going to check in to give St. John's a little height. Two-point game in overtime, Butler to inbound. Looking for Spolier. Nolan comes over with the steal. What a rotation from the freshman. Hoppy in transition is fouled and will go to the free throw line. And that's four on Bry. And Butler ran that play because they were trying to get Hoppy her fifth foul. Happy even that time offensively attacking the rim. You can see she did not go as strong as she probably wanted to with fear, fear a bit of fear that she might get an offensive. Yeah, the foul trouble that six different players are in, one foul away from being out, is really adding a subplot to every possession and every decision. There's the steal by Nolan as Hoppy hits both. The free throw shooting has been terrific, by the way, both sides. 84% for Butler, 92% for St. John's from the strike. Spolier goes right, got a hand to the face from Nolan as she went for the steal. Spolier with 22 today. She might not be her team's leading scorer today. Just barely ahead of Kat Strong right now, who has 21. It's the second one-point lead for Butler. A lot of time left in overtime. Alston having her, one of her best games in a St. John's uniform. Feeds KB. Red Storm in front. Coach Godlewski took Strong out on the floor. She's getting a chance to get her breather as well as Bry. And so KB... May be able to get some buckets down low now. Spolier trying to shake free. Switched on to Alston. Parker has loved that matchup today, and she gets the bounce. Bulldogs in front. Parker with the strong left, and St. John still switching on everything, and Parker going right at her. Correa, open look, and she drains it! Every time Correa knocks down big shots for St. John's, and she always looks so poised, John. St. John's 42% from three-point range today. Almost everybody's been red hot. Spolier trying to answer, and she does! Oh my goodness, Kristen Spolier. She's a shooter! 26. 
and that's going to be the type of weekend in the Big East. You know, the big, the stars will step up and play in crunch time. And right now, we can see the stars are who's knocking down these overtime buckets. Hoppy, pull up, two pointer. Well, short, didn't have the range. Rebound grabbed by Atosu. Butler with the ball and a one point lead. Spolier against Correa. Five to shoot, Bry traveled, turnover. Bry did not know exactly what she wanted to do. Wanted to take the shot at first, but great call by the ref. She did not put the ball down on the floor before making that first step. And for Hoppy, driving, kicking. Alston made one player miss, puts up a floater short. Rebound is loose on the floor. Bailey for St. John's. Plenty of time. Correa, tough shot. Gets the bounce. St. John's in front, and Butler uses a timeout. They'll advance the ball here in the final minute of overtime. Correa, only a rookie, first year in college basketball. Time at the time again, is looking like the Seton Hall game. Once again for St. John's with Correa knocking down the clutch shot, shot after shot. What the roll that was for her on that one, and that was not an easy bucket at all. Neither you nor I thought that was going in. It was too flat, it was going at the front of the rim. And Leilani Correa didn't think it was going in either. Right, we can look at her face right now, but <laughs> she'll take those two points. Shooters and... bounce. Wow. What an overtime. Right. I what? mean, usually you see some nerves, you see some turnovers, and it's not been perfect, but it's been really good execution. Yeah, it's a great basketball game on both ends. A nice crowd for this final weekend, and definitely came to perform and put on a show both these teams have been doing for us tonight. Seton Hall and Creighton won earlier today. St. John's trying to keep pace. They have the tiebreaker over both of those teams, but the tiebreaker only helps if you're tied in the standings. Seton Hall will, of course, get Butler Sunday afternoon, whereas Creighton will be hosting Georgetown. St. John's up one. Butler with the ball. Strong is not played in the overtime, or if so, it's been barely. Right, but I'm pretty sure he's going to get her, coach he, is going to get her back on the floor. She's really been a, a huge threat, and I want to see St. John's. They're going to have to figure out who they can have leave to double team her. That's strong on the right there, weighing in as part of Kurt Godlewski's huddle. Beat Xavier 63-61 in overtime, January 31st. Trying to go back-to-back 20-win -back seasons for the first time since 2011. So it's Parker, Toure, Spolier, Bry, and Strong. And you can see Spolier asking, how many timeouts do we have? And the answer was none. They have to get this in. And Bailey, she has long arms. She can just get a deflection. Into Strong. Wants Spolier back door. Bailey got a hand to it, and Hoppy has the ball. Gets it to KB. 
minimal difference and Alston is fouled. Kadeja Bailey had the steal and was fouled the game winning free throws on Sunday and she has the steal in overtime. She was smart. She was going to try to get back into the hands of Spolier after she inbounded it. She was ready and got a great job getting her arm in there and getting that deflection. Boy, has Alston been money or what? She had six points through three quarters. She's got 20, 10 of them from the free throw line without a miss. Right now they just have to play smart. St. John slide their feet, play straight up defense, but Butler has to attack the rim and try to force them to foul. Parker went up, didn't get it to the rim, and it turns over to St. John's. And Joe Tartamella wants timeout to make sure they get this ball in. St. John's in control now, but as we saw on Sunday in the closing seconds against Seton Hall, that doesn't guarantee you anything. Absolutely. A lot of time is still left, John. St. John's has to get this ball inbounds, and I'll tell you what, we all know it's not going to be easy with this Butler defense, one of the best defensive teams in the country right now. And so having to break the pressure and break the press against Butler will not be easy. Five different players in double digits for St. John's. They're all on the floor. Alston with 20, Correa 18, KB and Hoppy with 14, and Kadeja Bailey with 10. For Butler, Christian Spolier with 26, Kat Strong with 21, and Genesis Parker with 10. Bry fouled out. And St. John's gets it into Hoppy. She's fouled by Parker. And so Quidasha Hoppy, who began the day sitting and watching after she picked up two early fouls has 14 points in the second half in overtime as she heads to the free throw line, trying to create some separation. I'm almost shocked Coach Turner Mello didn't have Hoppy inbounded and try to get the ball into Alston's hands, who's been really the hot hand behind the free throw line. Hoppy is an 81% free throw shooter and hits the first. Both good from Hoppy, five point lead. Spolier from three, too strong. Bailey the rebound. She's fouled by Caceres and that might do it for St. John's. What a ball game this has been and St. John's closing in on a critical win in their race for positioning in the Big East Tournament. Kadeja Bailey, a little less pressure than the free throws she sunk on Sunday. Looks good anyway. 11 points, 8 boards for her. Spolier lays it in at the buzzer, but that's going to do it. St. John's in overtime. Takes down Butler for the second time this year. Wins a second straight nail biter. And produces a four-way tie for fourth in the Big East. Heading into the final day of the regular season on Sunday. Great game by both teams, Butler and St. John's came to play tonight. St. John's able to make some clutch shots. That Correa, two big buckets for her at the end. Alston, great free throw shooting and hoppy. And so St. John's earning another home win. What a finish, St. John's wins it by five. We'll come back with one of the many heroes, Alyssa Alston, that's straight ahead. St. John's 85, Butler 80.
St. John's University is New York, through and through. While our roots may be here in the city, our Catholic and Vincentian influence is felt around the globe. Diverse, determined, and dedicated, our students graduate career ready and primed to take on the challenges of tomorrow. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Back here in Queens with a happy Alyssa Alston. Heck of a performance in helping St. John's beat Butler 85-80 in overtime. I mean, Alyssa, this game was a heck of a battle all the way throughout, but you really seemed to take over in the fourth quarter in overtime. What led to that? My team, the crowd, the coach, he kept us all involved. He told us to relax, be patient, keep our poise, and it worked out for us. Be patient. You're setting records sprinting from the end line to midcourt, <laughs> bringing the ball up. Uh, you, you were clinical at the free throw line. You couldn't get the and one to go, but you were draining your free throws. Where did that confidence come from? Practice. At the end of practice every day, coach had sent us a quote on the line. And to avoid the sprint, we got to make our free throws. So it definitely came in handy today. That's real pressure, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Now, the Butler game plan that they threw at you, they are a physical team. What was the key to matching that and dealing with it? St. John principles. Uh, keep your pace up. Uh, transition and play strong. You were honored before the game for scoring your 1,000th point of your career. What's it been like to finish at St. John's with this team in this season? It's been a impeccable season, a impeccable year with these ladies. Um, I'm glad I got it here with my family. My family was able to see. It was just an impeccable moment. Last one for you, Alyssa. How much confidence do you guys have now, one game away from the Big East tournament, and how much has this team progressed throughout the season? We've been progressing every game. We have our have our times where we down, but that don't define us. We keep going. Um, this win right here just definitely get our confidence going and um, ready for the, uh, the, the Big East tournament. Alyssa, congratulations. Great game today. Thank you. Alyssa Alston, one of the heroes for St. John's as they pull out an 85-80 overtime win over Butler. Big race in the Big East. St. John's wins this one by five for everyone involved. For I'm Jonathan Yardley. Thanks for joining us tonight. Enjoy the weekend. Red Storm win it 85-80 in OT.